This is not only the world's thinnest 5G smartphone, but the world's first mass-produced smartphone to incorporate Qualcomm's first mid-range 5 nanometer process node technology-driven chipset, the Snapdragon 780G, and it does so at a very low price. This is my unboxing and extremely detailed review of Xiaomi's brand spanking new budget-friendly device, the Mi 11 Lite 5G, in which I'll be comparing it to other devices within the Xiaomi family tree, as well as testing out its design, display, camera software, dual stereo speakers, 90 FPS gaming, and finally benchmarks. We get a type C to headphone jack adapter in the box, which means that there is no earphone jack on the phone itself. We also get a silicon case and of course the device itself. We do indeed get a cable in the box, that being a type A to type C cable, as well as a 33 watt charging block in the box. And yes, it can charge at 33 watts. So that's it for the contents of the box. Thankfully, we get everything in there. So without further ado, let's go ahead and unwrap this guy. This is the truffle black color version of this device. You can also pick it up in mint green or citrus yellow. You can get it in different colors if you go for the Mi 11 Lite, not the 5G model, but this is the 5G model. It has a better chipset in it and of course 5G capabilities as well. I really like this matte black finish at the back. It looks very classy. Underneath the hood, we get a 4,250 milliamp hour battery, 33 watt charging, NFC, Wi-Fi 6, Bluetooth 5.2, and IR blaster, as well as Gorilla Glass 6 on the front with a plastic frame and an impact resistant back glass. It picks up pretty much no fingerprint smudges, though we do still get that silicon case in the box. Not the most incredible case around, but it still does the job if need be on day one. We have a power button on the right hand side mixed up with a fingerprint sensor, a non-split volume rocker, an IR blaster on the top, as well as dual SIM 5G slots over there, which can pop in a micro SDXC slot, though it replaces some slots too. We do have a type C port at the bottom, which is 2.0 transfer speeds. And we do have dual stereo speakers here, one being within the top earpiece. The camera module at the back isn't that hefty, a lot smaller than other Xiaomi devices around, especially the Note 10 Pro. So when it's on a flat surface, it doesn't really give off much of a wobble effect, which is always an extra little bonus. And when comparing the design to other Xiaomi devices, run. I really do like the matte black finish at the back, very similar to the matte finish of the flagship Mi 11 series. I'm not the biggest fan of glossy devices and it is so darn thin at 6.81 millimeters and it's so darn light at 159 grams for the 5G variant and 157 grams for the 4G variant. We have a 6.55 inch full HD AMOLED display with 10 bit color, 1 billion colors that is, 800 nits of peak brightness, 90 hertz refresh rates and 240 hertz touch sampling rate so it's nice and comfortable in the hand, not too large, not too small either. And when comparing it to other devices around, all of them with AMOLED panels over here, the color accuracy is on par with the rest of them. And even though it's not quite as bright on paper, I still feel like it is just as bright in reality, even when outdoors. You can see the white balance is pretty much on point comparing it to all other Xiaomi devices around over here. The K40 is also known as the Poco F3, which recently got announced. So you can refer to that one as the Poco F3 here on out going forward. We do have 90 Hertz over here compared to the 120 Hertz on the rest of the Xiaomi devices. And I've said it so many times before, 90 Hertz is the sweet spot and 90 Hertz and QHD plus would actually definitely be the sweet spot. But since this is such a budget friendly phone, we're missing that feature over here. We have a couple other settings that we can tweak with such as a color reproduction within the settings as well as brightness. And of course there is dark mode as well, which you can use to dim your wallpaper when enabled or keep it bright if you'd like. And we can also use it within third party apps and of course all first party apps as well. We can also enable the always on display thanks to this being an AMOLED panel over here. And we get all the nice little animations when using the always on display like the kaleidoscope that you see over there with Xiaomi devices, they're all here and the color shifting one throughout time, which is great. But unfortunately no under display fingerprint sensor something that Xiaomi is shifting to here is the arc side fingerprint sensor within its budget friendly devices. It is pretty much exactly the same as all recently released budget friendly Xiaomi devices and it is nice and snappy. I must say they have done a superb job with this oxide fingerprint sensor. It's even a little bit snappier than the Mi 11's one which is optical underneath the display. We also have 2D face unlock. It is not very secure though. It is still on par in terms of speed compared to its Xiaomi brothers and cousins over here doing a great job in terms of unlocking your device rapidly but slightly less secure than using the fingerprint sensor. At the front we do have a 20 megapixel cell 
selfie snapper and the Mi 11 Lite 4G version. Only has 16 megapixels, selfies come out nice, crisp and clear, and there is minimal edge detection when it comes to taking portrait shots. This is Technic recording a 1080p at 60 frames per second selfie video on the brand new Xiaomi Mi 11 Lite 5G. Yes, that's right. It can record 1080p at 60 frames per second. That is the max, no 4K, but thankfully we do have 60 FPS. If you heard anything in the background, it was some tweeting birds. At the back, we have a 64 megapixel main sensor, which is laid with six layers of plastic. It has an aperture of f1.79 and can be binned down to 16 megapixels. And we also have an eight megapixel ultra wide sensor and of course a five megapixel tele macro lens. While the ultra wide sensor isn't the best I've seen, the main 64 megapixel shot looks great. Binning it down using AI looks even better with colors popping everywhere. We can also zoom in with the 64 megapixel main and we can zoom in with it binned and enabled AI over here which looks even better. Five times digital zoom doesn't look the best and ten times is the max zoom which isn't very good if you ask me. We do have that macro sensor and it does a great job nice up close and personal and of course we can also get an AI enabled portrait effect here which does a pretty great job with barely any edge detection whatsoever. We do have a 4k at 30 fps video recording using the back cam and we have a gyro electronic image stabilization here. Things are nice stable and steady. Unfortunately, no 60 FPS option for 4K, though we do have it for 1080p. We also have 1080p at 30 FPS using an AI mode over here, still using electronic image stabilization. It makes the colors pop a little bit more, though I don't think the detail is quite there as without using the artificial intelligence. We can also record at ultra wide, though it is capped at 1080p and 30 FPS. I would have liked to have seen this at 60 FPS since the selfie can even record at 60 FPS, the ultra wide should as well. Ultra wide can also shoot with AI enabled, keeping things at 30 FPS, making the colors pop even more. Once again, steady video mode is another option over here and enabling that it is capped at 30 FPS once more, but it keeps things nice and steady. It does dip in quality and color. Once you are in the phone, you're welcome to Xiaomi's MIUI 12. Unfortunately, no MIUI 12.5 as of right now, but we should be getting an upgrade on this device relatively soon. So stay tuned for that one. MIUI 12 is like we've come to know and love. In the past year, it has all the great features that you've come to enjoy, such as multitasking, as well as having those little mini windows and floating windows, doing things on the fly all at once. And the Snapdragon 780 chipset is no slouch, so it doesn't sweat whatsoever when doing all these crazy things, just jumping between your different screens when using the software. And of course, we also get welcomed to those great Xiaomi wallpapers from MIUI 12, as well as those amazing super wallpapers, such as the Red Planet one over here, which has a three phase transition. We also have Google Roots straight into the settings with Play Store on the home screen as soon as you boot it up for the first time. And we can use Google Assistant as well as these haptics being absolutely superb. We also have dual stereo speakers here paired with Xiaomi's sound effects, but how does it compete against the Redmi Note 10 Pro and Xiaomi Mi 11? The Snapdragon 780G chipset is the star of the show here. It is supposedly 40% faster than its previous generation Snapdragon 765G chipset. Remember the Mi 11 Lite 4G version is running on a Snapdragon 732G. So if you want this wonderfully new five nanometer tech driven chipset, the 780, you're gonna have to opt for the Mi 11 Lite 5G like I have over here. Running Genshin Impact with absolute max settings does a superb job. Remember the game is capped at 60 FPS and we're getting around 42, 43 FPS most of the time, which is fantastic for a mid-range chip. But remember, it's quite beefy for what it is. They're saying that it's pretty much on par with last year's 
flagship chipsets and running PUBG Mobile, no 90 FPS option, though that is limited to smooth graphics. We want the best graphics that we can get, which limits the game to 60 FPS and we're sitting at a rock solid 60, which is great. Bullet Force is another game that has no frames per second cap and we're getting a solid 90 FPS and this game is quite demanding and taxing in terms of GPU. Another game that has an unlimited frame rate is Dead Trigger 2, also sitting at a nice and steady 90 frames per second. Always good to see straight out of the box. The Snapdragon 888 processing chip, the flagship one from Qualcomm this year, was struggling a bit with many of these games hitting the unlimited frames per second cap over there. And Real Racing is one of them on this phone that cannot quite reach 90 FPS, but I'm pretty sure the devs will fix that in the coming weeks. So how does that Snapdragon 780G chipset score in a couple benchmarks? First, we're gonna check out the battery percentage as well as its degrees in Celsius at the start. And we'll compare this at the end. We're gonna be rocking Antutu version nine over here for the second time on my channel. The last one was my previous unboxing. We'll compare them at the end to other smartphone chips around within its same price segments. We're running Geekbench 5.3.2 over here, but like many Xiaomi devices before it, it keeps crashing. So I couldn't get a result over here. I'll be sharing the online results. And of course we have 3D Mark Wildlife, which I did manage to get through. Battery drain at the end went 8% down and got a rating of 16.2 milliamp hours per minute, which is fantastic. Not to mention it kept pretty cool, only adding 7.8 degrees in Celsius. When it comes to Antutu version nine results, we got a massive score of 525,664 points, which is well above its previous generation chipsets. Like I mentioned, it kept crashing when trying to run Geekbench 5.3.2, but I did see an online score of 862 single core and 2209 multi-core, which once again trumps its predecessor chips. And last but not least, 3D Mark Wildlife is very taxing in the GPU department. And with that wonderful new Adreno 642 integrated GPU, we're getting an FPS count here of 18.8, which makes it 50% better than last year's Snapdragon 765G. The Xiaomi Mi 11 Lite 5G is a fantastic device for its price. It has a premium matte black finish layered within impact resistant back glass, a familiar looking camera setup that takes crispy clear main stills, but falls short with ultra wide and zoom shots, which in turn is forgiven at this price point. It is the thinnest and lightest phone I have ever tested at just 6.81 millimeters and 159 grams respectively. And when you flip it over, you are welcomed to a comfortably sized screen at 6.55 inches, which still packs a punch with vibrant 10-bit color on an AMOLED display. Not to mention it has a silky smooth 90 hertz refresh rate, which when paired with the almighty five nanometer Snapdragon 780G chipset, runs games at a true flagship level. But it's not alone amongst many others within the Xiaomi family tree. And while the recently released Redmi Note 10 Pro boasts in camera and battery, it can't compete with the performance of the Mi 11 Lite 5G, not to mention its 5G capabilities and the Redmi K40 Pro is a worthy contender but it's currently only available in mainland China. The Redmi K40 aka Poco F3 drops the ball in the camera department but boasts an extra performance which may prove more favorable for some but bear in mind it is running on older 7 nanometer architecture. Performance is also a strong suit for the flagship Mi 11 alongside better optics, a QHD display and wireless charging, but let's not forget how much more expensive it is compared to its little brother. Its little brother being the Mi 11 Lite 5G is a fantastic device filled with all the goodies you could ask for, packed into a slim and light build, making it one of my favorite mid-range smartphones of 2021.